God bless you, everybody, at the sound of my voice. Welcome to today's teaching. It's a continuation of our teaching on life, style, evangelism. Today, we are going to be teaching about the seven mistakes of Adam and Eve in the garden. So you and I will not make the same mistake. So we can influence others to follow Jesus, our Redeemer. Having said that, let us go to the presence of God in prayer. Father, we thank you for another opportunity that you've given unto us to preach your precious word to your precious people. The Bible says, the entrance of your word give light. I pray that the light of the gospel will permit home and family right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you because victory belongs to us. We are praying, we are preaching from our position, not from our condition. Satan, your assignment has been canceled. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Welcome to today's teaching. Lifestyle evangelism, that is our topic for throughout this month. It's going to be powerful. I want to tag your friend and your family. Because Bible says we shall know the truth and the truth will set us free. Today we are going to learn about the seven mistakes of Adam and Eve in the garden. If we are going to bring the gospel to this dying world. Let us learn about these seven mistakes so we not repeat it in our own life. I'm taking my message from Genesis chapter 3. Verse 1 says, Genesis 3, 1, Now the serpent was more subdued than any beast of the field which the Lord God has made. And he came unto the woman. Yea, as God said, he shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Listen, verse 2, Then Eve opened up, and the woman said unto Sepal, Serpent, listen to me. The first mistake is this. Listen, do not dialogue with Satan. You always win. Take that. Very important. Don't dialogue with Satan. God has given mankind dominion over this earth and everything that creeps upon the earth. That's Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Anything. So Satan did not come to Eve and Adam in the garden as a lion to scare them. No. He knew that authority belonged to man. He didn't come to the garden like an elephant to overpower them. No, he knew that authority is more than power. He came as a snake. He didn't use questions for Adam and Eve to doubt. Number one, don't dialogue with Satan. You take authority over Satan. Somebody's getting touched right now. Number two, do not doubt the word of God. Look at the question. Yeah, look at what the question. Look at what he said. And he, and he said unto women, Yea, as God said, he shall not eat of every tree of the garden. As a suggestion to bring doubt. Don't doubt the word of God. Mistake number two. Number three, listen. Do not define your mistake. If you define your mistakes, you close down to any solution. You see, when God asked Eve, listen, if I God, not if God asked Adam in verse 12 of Genesis 3, say, and the man said, Adam replied, God. The woman whom thou gavest to me with me, he gave me of the tree, and I did eat. 
mistake. Don't defend your mistake. God asked Adam. He said, who told you that you are naked? He said, the woman. Is the one. Don't defend your mistake. Are you listening to me? You close door to solution. Hey, number four, avoid the death of destiny. Did you know after that sin, God drew them out in the garden? Their first son was Cain. The brother of Abel. You know the story in Genesis chapter 4. Cain killed his brother and murdered him. Listen. He, he murdered, he, that is the death of destiny. Because of jealous. One that's jealous and envy. Bible's only fool works is there. That is James 3.16. Number four, don't focus on what you lack, but on what you have. Don't focus on what you lack, but on what you have. Satan said, God knew that when you eat these fruits, your eyes will be opened. You'll be like God. Listen. Eve thought it's not like God already. When God made us in his own image, this thing, sit down, we tell you, you know, you don't have this, you don't have that. Are you safe? If you are born again, you are above everything in this art. According to John chapter 3, verse 31, you are above all. This time you say, that you don't lack anything, you have Christ, you have all. Praise the Lord. Bible says, the art is of the Lord and the fullness thereof. Psalm 24, verse 1. Hey, he said, you lag. That is why God don't want you to eat. Listen to me. I'll teach on this on Wednesday in, in depth of this. Number six, do not have any desire out of your righteousness with God. Hey, he said, God knew that. You better act without God. Wherever you have, out of your stand right with God is a sin. Praise God. If your desire is not according to the will of God, it's a sin. Whatever represents God in your life is a sin. Either your spouse, your property, your job, God ought to be number one in our life. Colossians 1, 18 says that. It's in everything God should have the preeminence. Matthew 6, 33. It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. You want peace of God in your life? Don't have any desire that's out of your proper relationship with God. See? That is the sin number six. Don't have any desire out of the righteous with God. What I will take you away from God is a sin. Number seven. I will teach you on this on Wednesday. You don't want to miss that. Number seven. Differentiate between your position in Christ and your condition. Your position in Christ and your condition. Are you hearing me? Satan told Jesus, he said, if you can bow down for me, I will give you the whole world because it belongs to me. Listen, you may be down today that that is not the end of the journey. That may be your condition now, but don't judge your position. That God has raised you up together with Christ in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You are man and conqueror. You are a winner. So those are some mistakes of Adam and Eve in the garden. I'll say it again. Number one, don't dialogue with the devil. He will win. That's what Adam and Eve did. Number two, don't doubt the word of God. He doubt the word of God. He takes side against God. 
Number three, don't defend yourself. Number four, avoid the death of destiny. That is why Cain killed his brother. Number five, don't focus on what you lack, but on what you have. God is your father. If you are born again, you don't need anything that will take you away from God. Your spouse, your property, your position, if you're going to take you away from God, you don't need that. God first, righteousness, rise down with God through Jesus first. Amen? Number seven, differentiate between your position in Christ and your condition. Those are seven. Seven is a number of completion. Anything is under this seven. To them away from the presence of God. And that is the sessions of generational course. That is the session, listen to me, of generational course is the sessions of satanic oppression, depression. And the session of that, I'll teach about that. You become yokes, the yoke of the flesh, the desire of the flesh without God. You will suppress what the Bible called sin when I begin to teach on this. Hmm? And if you know all these things, the good of the word of God. Now God sent Jesus. And he came over 2,000 years ago. He conquered sin and Satan for us. So in Christ, the authority is back. So you don't pray in hope. What am I being? I mean that, that. Listen. What did he pay for your healing? He paid for your victory. He closed the gate of hell. He restored righteousness. So you don't pray, oh God, come and heal me. No. If you do that, you pray in hope. Jesus paid for your healing. Your God said, by his strength I am healed. So disease, lose your hold from me. That's how you pray. When you say, oh God. Come and bless me. Come and bless me. It's a good prayer. It's not the best prayer. You, do, you are praying in hope. You are blessed already in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So you're going to pray everything that stop my blessing. I come against them now. Lose. You pull now. If it's not now, it is not fate. That is hope. You find now. We're going to Find out in this teaching what Jesus paid for. What is called salvation. Some people are so utterly minded. They are no good. They, have to, they want to go to heaven. Heaven, heaven, heaven. Yes, you go to heaven. Did you know you have to take off time to over Satan here? Listen to what the Bible says in 1 John 3, 8. And go read it on simultaneously with them. Colossians 2, 15. Satan took the authority over the earth. And when Jesus came, he restored the authority to mankind. That's why you have to come to Jesus. First John 3, 8 say, He that committed sin is of the devil. You hear that? For the devil sinned from the beginning. Listen to this. For this purpose, this is the reason, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. It destroys the works of the devil. Disease is the word of the devil. Fear is the work of the devil. Depression is the work. Jesus destroyed them. In Colossians 2.15, see, and having, Colossians 2.15, and having spawn, principality, power, he made a shield of them, who pull a triumph over them in need. It destroyed the works of the devil. It destroyed the devil himself. So, which means, when you want to pray, you pray for your position of authority. You don't beg God, oh, God, help me. No, God is your father. You go to him boldly. Hey, kalori, boku, tajaya. You know, some of you have heard it from me before. There's a woman came to me some years back, said, said, a daughter in Africa, he got the news that they entered the court. She was possessed. Demon, I said, Let us wait upon the Lord for three days fasting. I'm not fasting for that victory. 
but I'm subdue my flesh. <laughs> Whoa, so the Spirit of God can move. You don't fast of victory. No, Jesus won the victory. Where the first and the second and third day I pronounced deliverance for that daughter. And she came back again to Christ. Oh, man of God. I said, what happened? You say, my daughter, which one? The one that possessed the What happened? You say, my daughter, possessed. I said, but we are praying. I don't pray in hope. I pray in faith. Faith is now. What of the manifestation? Listen, when you cast out devil, you lay your hand upon the sea, you speak in tongues. And what you ask God is not come to pass yet. What are you going to do? That is what I want to teach on Wednesday. So when you are moving in the right direction with Christ, your life will influence others. Your conversation will influence others. Your conduct will influence others. They say, wow. They want to follow your God. It don't be up today, down tomorrow. Because your daughter give you bad news. Oh my God, no. You stand against the works of the devil. You're going to leave. By the way, I have to rebuke that woman. And Holy Spirit, open her eyes. Today, the daughter is doing well. Let's don't just pray. When you come to prayer, you pray in faith. We have one hope as a body of Christ. I will teach you that when we go to part four of last evangelism. Nobody will follow you if you don't know where you are going and you don't know where you, don't know where you are. Nobody will follow you. Christ is in you now. We want to walk in the victory that we want for you on the cross to be continued. Don't forget that seven mistakes that Adam and Eve made in the garden. We continue on Wednesday. I'll be telling you part five of this, how you can pray in faith. I will demonstrate it. And I'll be telling you when what you pray for, you don't see the manifestation yet. What are you going to do? Don't you miss that. I see somebody get blessed now. God is telling me healing is taking place now because the word of God is out. I come against fear in your life. Came with Mozart. Hey, Holy Ghost want to, you want to bless somebody now? Wait, don't go anywhere. I want to join my faith with your faith. But in case you are not born again, say, Lord Jesus, say that with me. Say, come to my life, say that, and come and be my Lord and my Savior. Amen. Have you seen done that? Yes. Let me join my faith with your faith and pull the devil where I belong under your feet. Can't do by you press, you crush it. Enemy, fear, depression, disease, lie, poverty, confusion. I come against you now. Lose a horse from that man, that woman, that home, that church. Lose a horse and let the people of God go free. Say I'm free. Say that with me two times. I am free. I am free. God said the healing power is flowing. It's touching life now. Let me hear from you. Let me hear from you. You are free. Amen. Oh, listen. Share your testimony with us. And share your prayer request with us. Hallelujah. If you're anywhere in Rodeland, our church is God's Family Church, 1525. Broad Street, Cranston, Rodeland. Here, is USA. Our service every Sunday by 9.30 a.m. Come and join the group of winners. Oh, we are expecting to see you. Anywhere you have viewed this word from, make sure on Sunday you go to Bible-believing church where your spirit man is going to be fed. You can staff your doubts. Join them. To leave it to God. I will see you again on Wednesday. The continuation of lifestyle evangelism, part five. The same time, 
and the same place. Remember, come on now, Jesus is love. And share this in all your social platform. I see you on Wednesday. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus.